Hey there, I hope you're doing well. Hope you're ready for another video. We have kind of a short video on a um, not simple, but easy to understand concept that is very, very useful. Is it uh, imperative? Not really, but you're gonna find that Descartes' rule of science can really save you a lot of time in the next concept that we're going to learn, which is how to solve uh, rational functions, or sorry, polynomial functions using the rational zeros theorem. So factoring creates um, the ability to solve by the zero product property, and that's what we're getting to. Uh, but I wanted to throw this concept in there because I'm going to be referencing it in the next video. And it's important for you to understand because I want to save you time. I don't want you to waste a lot of time checking things that you don't need to because they don't exist. It'll give you a better understanding of what is going to happen when you start factoring these polynomials. So. We're going to get right into the Descartes rule of signs. Um, I'm not going to prove it for you. I will tell you the idea behind it, though. So as we go through it, I'm going to explain to you why is it that you can have three positive x-intercepts or one, but not two and not zero, uh, or two or zero, but not one or three, why it decreases by an even number. And so here's what you're going to learn in this video. You're going to learn that if you have a polynomial in order, and you just count the number of sign changes from left to right, it will tell you the number of positive x-intercepts you have, for real. Um, it's gonna tell you either have like three or one or that's it, or maybe six or four or two or zero. You know, well, that, that might not be that powerful. It's powerful when you start combining it with rational zeros theorem. When you start finding zeros, it'll tell you how many are left or maybe it'll tell you there's no positives or no negatives. And that's very important because we can eliminate checking, checking um, values that would not be x-intercepts anyway. And so that's what we do. Then we change the signs of our odd exponents. Why? Because you're gonna evaluate for negative x. All that does is change the sign of your odd exponent terms and do the same thing. Only this time it's gonna tell you the possible number of negative x-intercepts. That's what the Descartes rule of signs basically does. So we're gonna get right into it. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna put your polynomial in order every time. Now, if we're gonna count number of sign changes, that's very important. You wanna make sure they're in order. We do that anyway for basically everything we do, um, but it's super important here. So make sure your polynomial is in order before you start any of this stuff. Then we're gonna count the number of sign changes from left to right. So let's look at our first example. From Well, first we check order. Order means your exponents are decreasing until you have a constant, if you have a constant. It should be a last. So seven, three, two, zero, that's fantastic. That's what we want. Then we count the number of sign changes from left to right. So we go, okay, well, what, is, what does that mean? You look at your signs. So I gave you, starting with a negative, so that you can see that that is a signed term. If that negative wasn't there, we would consider that to be a positive. And we might even write a little plus in front so that you can see what's going on. So this is a negative. That is a plus, a minus, and a plus. So as we're counting from left to right, you say, okay, that's a negative. We have not started really counting changes yet because you start somewhere. So we say that's a negative. What's the next sign? Is it the same? Or we can say, is it, is it, uh, could it be written as a negative? Or is it a positive or a plus? So we say that's a negative, that's a plus. This counts as a sign change. You go, okay, think of this as negative or minus. Think of this as positive or plus. This would be negative to positive. That is a sign change. One, positive to negative, that's two. Negative to positive, that's three. There are three sign changes here. One, two, and three. So here's what we're going to say. We go, all right, there are three sign changes. What that means is that in this polynomial, if you were to graph it or you were to solve it, you are going to have either three, that's what this says right here. It's very wordy. And when you read the first time, you go, that doesn't make any sense at all. Um, you are gonna have this number of sign changes or an even number less than that amount. You go, what does that mean? Even numbers are two or four or six. So all you really do is you count the number of sign changes. Hey, there's three. You could potentially have three sign changes or keep subtracting two from this number until you hit either one or zero and then stop. And you will have a list of the number of positive x-intercepts you could get. 
So we said, all right, and I know that this can be the confusing the first time you hear it. Um, so I'm gonna kind of repeat myself several times in slightly different ways so that it clicks in your head. Put it in order, we got it. Count the sign changes, that's the most important thing uh, besides interpretation. So you go, okay, uh, one sign change, two sign changes, three sign changes. You write that number down. That number that we write down represents the number of positive x-intercepts or any even number less than that represents the number of positive x-intercepts. So there could be three positive x-intercepts. If you remember, this is the x-axis and this is the y-axis. This would be considered the positive x-axis and the negative portion of the x-axis. What this says is there will be three or one positive x-intercept. It's either going to cross or bounce one time or three times. Not two, not zero, one, three or one. Now, how to, where do I get the one from? So there will be three or one positive x-intercepts. Where do I get the one from? That's where this comes in right here, that or an even number less than this. So you write down the number of sign changes like three, and you go, okay, start subtracting two from that. Two is an even number. And every multiple of two is an even number. So you go, okay, if I have three sign changes, there's three or subtract two, one positive x-intercept. Let's say you started with seven. If you had um, seven sign changes, you go, okay, there, there are either seven positive x-intercepts or five, take away two, or three, take away two, or one. That's the potential number of positive x-intercepts that we would have. Now, it's not gonna be all of those, it's gonna be one of those, either seven or five or three or one. What if you had like six, like six sign changes? Well, you'd have either six positive x-intercepts or take away two, four or take away two, two, or take away two, zero. So you come up with sort of a list of how many positive x-intercepts you could get. So count the number of sign changes, three. Write that number down and just subtract two until you get down to one or zero, depending on whether you have an odd number of um, sign changes or an even number of sign changes. So what this says is that we can either intersect the x-axis on the positive portion of it one time or three times, three times or one time, that's it. Now, here's why that's important. We know for sure that we're going to have at least one positive x-intercept. So when we go check numbers uh, in the next video, I'm like, ah, oh, what numbers are gonna work? We would want to include positive values because you are going to have one. This is why we can't get to zero. This is why we don't put zero up here because um, one minus two is, it surpasses zero. You can't just subtract one and go, oh, it's three or two or one or zero. You're gonna have either three or one, right? That's, that's your guarantee. You're gonna have either three or one positive x-intercepts. You're gonna have at least one of them, possibly three of them, no more than three, no less than one, and you're not gonna have two. So it's one or the other. Um, so you would want to include those because you know you're gonna hit somewhere over here at least one time, possibly three times, but that's the only options for you. Now, a common question is, why in the world do you subtract two? Why? Why two or four? Um, what that has to do with is irreducible quadratics. So irreducible quadratics, like x squared plus 25, you cannot factor that. That does not give you any additional x-intercepts, but what it does is subtracts from your, your degree. So if you remember this, and you do need to know this, your degree represents the total number of x-intercepts you could possibly have. So this says you could potentially have seven x-intercepts. Are you gonna have that many? Not necessarily. Why? Well, because irreducible quadratics give you complex zeros, but no x-intercepts. They do things like they create these, um, these local maxima and minima somewhere above the x-axis where it doesn't cause an intersection or below the x-axis. And so what that does is this counts for, if this is a factor up here, I don't even know, but what this would do is this would take away two from your degree if you start factoring it, but give you no x-intercepts. And for that reason, that's, that's basically the reason why you subtract two from this number of sign changes. Because if you're gonna miss one x-intercept, you're gonna miss two at a time.
you're never going to just miss one x intercept at a time because of those irreducible quadratics. That's why we subtract two from the number of sign changes. I hope that makes sense. I might mention that one more time as we go through. So, all right, um, a rundown one more time. Put it in order. We got it. Count the sign changes. Cool. You're going to have that many or two less than that, as you, and you write the whole list. So, three or one positive x intercepts. Then what we do is what we, we evaluate for negative x, kind of like evaluating for an even or odd function. We say, all right, what about f of negative x? Now, some people get really confused on this. They go, oh, I'm really bad at evaluating. I'm going to give you a trick for this. Don't even worry about it. Don't even evaluate. Don't even plug in negative x. Just change the signs of your odd powered terms. And here's why. If you evaluate negative x into an even, negative anything squared gives you a, a positive. It's not going to change that sign. Constants never change sign. You can't, you can't evaluate that. But odds, when you plug in a negative there, it will change the sign. So if I plug in negative x to x cubed, it'll give me negative x cubed and it'll change that sign. If I plug in negative x to x to the seventh power, it'll give me negative x to the seventh power and it'll change that sign. So how to evaluate this easily? Just change your odd, not your even, not your constants, your odd powered terms, change the sign in front of them. So if I'm going to evaluate um, f of negative x, I'm going to, this is an odd powered term, I'm going to change this to positive x to the 7th, 4x to the 7th. This is an odd powered term, I'm going to change it to minus x cubed. I won't change this even powered term, because even powers don't change signs when you plug in a positive or negative, they're even. I'm not going to change my constant because there's nothing to evaluate there. And so I just look at it and change my odd power terms, the signs of those odd power terms. And then I do the same thing. But what we're going to get here is we're going to get the number of potential negative x-intercepts. So positive, cool, gives you a number of positive. That's pretty convenient. Change the sign of your odd power terms. That's evaluating for negative x. And then do the same thing. The number of sign changes here are, and this is what I was saying earlier, maybe write a little plus for the positive. That way you can see the sign change. That's a positive, or we can think plus. That's a minus, but we can think negative. The sign change, positive to negative. Oh, that's one. Negative to negative, that does not change. So positive to negative, that's one. Negative to negative, that did not change. Do not count that. Negative to positive, that's two. There are two sign changes here. What does that mean? Because we evaluated for this negative x, and we repeated this, we counted from left to right, we said, all right, there are two sign changes. Then this number represents the number of negative x-intercepts, or an even a number less than that will represent your negative x-intercepts. So here's what this says. This says, if I have two sign changes after evaluating negative x, I will have either two or so start subtracting two and get your list down to either one or zero. I will have either two or zero. Two minus two is zero. Two or zero negative x-intercepts. That's it. That's all we can possibly have. Now, why am I teaching this to you? Well, because if you use some critical thinking, this can really help you later. I want you to think about this. What's the degree of your polynomial right now? You should look up there and go, that's seven that says, potentially, the most we could have are seven x-intercepts. That's it, seven x-intercepts. Are we gonna have that many? No, and I guarantee it, here's why. We did Descartes' rule of signs, and it says our positive x-intercepts, there's either three of them or one of them. Notice how we subtracted two to get that list. We stopped at one, because you can't subtract two past that. So we have either three or one positive x-intercepts. We changed the sign of our odd power terms, essentially evaluating negative x, and we did it again. We said, okay, there's either two or zero negative x-intercepts. You are either going to have positives or negatives. You can't factor out an x, and so there's no um, there's no zero. There's no x-intercept right at zero. That doesn't, that's not going to work. So you either have three or one over here, two or zero over here. You could potentially have no x-intercepts. And negative x-intercepts, none of them. But you definitely don't have seven. Look at this. At most, you could have three positive and two negative. That's only five. That's only five. 
So if our degree is seven and we say we can have at most five, then what's the other two? The other two is something like x squared plus 25. It will give you an irreducible quadratic that does not give you x-intercepts. That's valuable to know. So we know that when we factor this, when we get down to factoring that one, we're going to end with at least one irreducible quadratic. Again, the irreducible quadratic, because that is a power 2, that starts taking away 2 at a time from your degree, and the same thing would happen 2 at a time from your positive and or your negative x-intercepts. That's why you subtract 2 to get this list. It sounds really weird to say subtract some even number less than that. Well, what they mean is, yeah, subtract 2, then subtract 2 again. What do you subtract? 4. Subtract 2, then 2, then 2. What do you subtract? 6. Uh, that's why it says an even number. It basically what it does, it says just give me a list. Start with the number sign changes, give me a list by subtracting 2 until you get to 1 or 0. Like this or that, and then you're done. This is the potential of positive x-intercepts, 3 or 1, or potential of negative x-intercepts, 2 or 0. It also says one more thing. If you find a negative x-intercept, you know for sure that you have to have another one because you're either 0 or 2. So if you find one of them, there's going to be another one because you know you have to have 0 or 2. You can't find one and then you go, I have zero. That doesn't make sense. You can't find one and go, I guess I have one. It was wrong. No, no, no. It's going to be either zero or two. So if you find one negative x-intercept, there is going to be another one there, according to at least this polynomial. So that's the main idea. That's Descartes' rule of science. Um, as we move forward to the next section, I'm going to be refreshing your memory on this. We're going to do it every single time. So I'm going to say, hey, remember Descartes' rule of science? Let's make this easier. Let's see what we could potentially have. I'm also going to refresh your memory that in the last video that you watched, we had those two examples, and I hope that you remember uh, what we got out of them. You might pause and go back and just kind of think about uh, what those what those were when we um, when we checked started checking with long division and synthetic division on, on what we got out of them. So I'm going to refresh your memory as we, as we go through. But this is going to be interesting because I'll put this into into play for you. So. Let's go ahead and let's practice Descartes' rule sign two more times, just on these last two, and then we're going to call it good. So g of x, hopefully you see what's wrong with this. Before you start checking Descartes' rule signs or anything that I tell you with polynomials, you have to have it in order. You see, if we go right from here and go, oh, hey, yeah, uh, this is a negative, that's a positive, that's one, that doesn't change, two sign changes. Hey, there's two sign changes. That means I would have, remember I had not evaluated negative x, I would have two or zero positive x-intercepts. That's wrong. Why? Well, because this is not in order. And in order might change some signs around. And so when we put this in order, when we put that in order, it is different. So let's think through everything I want you to know about polynomials at this point. Number one, they should be in order. Number two, uh, well, when you look at the degree, that's like the first thing we look for is the leading term, which has your degree and has your end behavior, it has a lot of stuff in it that we've talked about already. But your degree also says there will be at most three x-intercepts total. I need you to get that, that the degree gives you the maximum number of x-intercepts. So when I say, hey, three, this will have at most three x-intercepts. Is it going to have all three? I don't, you don't know without doing a little bit of work. Uh, and we're going to do that work right now. But Descartes' rule of signs will answer that question for us. And it's pretty cool. So this will have at most three x-intercepts. What if it doesn't have three? Then pairs of two will be wrapped up in irreducible quadratics. And pairs of two will be complex solutions. We're going to talk about exactly why that is when we get to complex solutions. We'll say, why do they come in pairs? Why do they come in conjugate pairs? It has to do with quad quadratic formula. And if you have plus or minus and negative inside of a square root, well, then you get the same value, but plus and a minus. You're going to get a, a conjugate pair. They always come in twos. I'm going to say that one more time. This degree tells you the maximum number of x-intercepts. It tells you the total number of solutions if you have complex numbers. So we could potentially have three x-intercepts. If we don't have three x-intercepts, then we will have one x-intercept. They will have they will be in pairs of twos if we don't have them. Uh, so let's go ahead and let's let's go through our, our rule of signs. So I'm gonna put a little plus here signifying that I start with a positive. 
Positive to negative, that's one sign change. Negative to positive, that's two sign changes. Positive to negative, that's three sign changes. What that means for us is that we are going to have three x-intercepts on the positive side of the x-axis, or subtract two from that number, create a list that goes down to one or zero. We'll have three positive x-intercepts or one positive x-intercepts. Nothing else. Those are the only two options that you have here. So over here, we either hit it once or we hit it three times. No two, no zero. We know for sure that we're going to have a positive x-intercept, at least one. And so what we do in the next video is we would start checking positive numbers to see which one works. Um, if you remember, we did that, actually, and we plugged in, I think it was positive one. We said uh, two minus one is one. One plus two is three. Three minus three is zero. Oh, yeah, hey, one worked. One one is a positive x-intercept and we said that was a zero therefore it gave us a factor and we did long division on that and i taught you synthetic division on that so we knew we had one positive x-intercept now what we got out of that no you know i won't ruin the suspense if you if you watch it back what we got out of that was an not gonna ruin the suspense it was an irreducible quadratic when we got that if you take that and you do synthetic division and just divide out one uh, use one as your x-intercept what you're going to get is an irreducible quadratic. Wait a minute, do irreducible quadratics give you x-intercepts? No, that's the whole point of subtracting two. It was an irreducible quadratic that gave you no more x-intercepts. So we found one positive x-intercept. What we did is we divided it and we found an irreducible quadratic that had no other x-intercepts. So you can't have three here. Three is the maximum, but we got an irreducible quadratic. That was fascinating. Now, let's go ahead and finish this thing off. If we had evaluated g of negative x, what we would do is we'd change our odd-powered terms, change the sign of those things. So we're going to have negative 2x cubed. We leave the x squared alone. Minus 2x, we leave the constant alone. And you'll, wait a second, hang on a second. Uh, negative, negative, negative. How many sign changes do you have? None. Zero sign changes. Now, this is where I think Descartes' rule of signs is very powerful. This is my opinion. This is where it's most powerful. If you have no sign changes, then that tells you something huge. That tells you in this case, because remember, we're on negative x here. This is talking about negative x-intercepts. You are going to have how many? None. Not potentially two, not potentially four, none. You will have zero negative x-intercepts, 100% guaranteed. Now, if you're curious as to why that's so important, in the next video, you're going to be learning something called the Rational Zeros Theorem, where I tell you how to find a list of numbers that are potentially... Uh, or that contain all of your rational zeros. Well, um, if you know that you have no negative x-intercepts, don't check negatives. That's huge. That saves you half of the work that you would otherwise do because you got to check negative and positive. Normally, if you know you don't have negative x-intercepts, you eliminate half your list of numbers to check. That's fantastic. That saves you so much time because you're just going to be focused on the positives. So wrapping this whole thing up with this example, we put it in order, we checked our sign changes, you say you have three or one positive x-intercepts. You change your odd power terms by evaluating negative x. And you have zero sign changes. This says you will have no negative x-intercepts. So you either touch once or three times here, you are not going to cross over here. That's, that's good to know. And then you start dividing. You go, all right. When, again, when we divided out that, that one or that x minus one is the factor, we got an irreducible quadratic. What that means is that we are not going to have 
any more than one positive x-intercept. We found our one, right? It was one. But when you divide that out and get an irreducible quadratic, it says, well, you can't have, you can't go to three, you can't have two. That irreducible quadratic is why this happens. Why you go, you're either gonna have three or one. Because that irreducible quadratic, while it took two away from your degree, if you were to divide it, it doesn't yield any more x-intercepts. That's pretty interesting. I hope that that makes sense to you. It's very powerful, and as we continue, you're gonna see this thing play out. Right now is just kind of a introduction on how it works, and you're gonna see it in the next video. Let's do the last one. So h of x is three x to the sixth plus 82 x to the third plus 27. It's in order, looks really good. And so the first thing we do with the Cartes rule of signs is we count the sign changes the way that it is, and that will represent a list of positive x-intercepts. And you go, wait, wait a minute. Uh, that's a positive, that's a positive, that's a positive. There are no positive x-intercepts. What that means is that we have, or sorry, no uh, sign changes. That means we have zero positive x-intercepts. None. This graph, guaranteed, will not intersect the positive half of the x-axis. Then what we do is we, we evaluate h of negative x. Essentially, that leaves your even power terms and your constant terms alone. It changes your odd power terms due to the reasons we already talked about. So I keep my positive 3x to the 6th, that's an even power term. I change my 82x to the 3rd, I change the sign, because that's an odd, odd power term, so even doesn't change, odd does change. Constant was plus 27, I leave it, constants do not change. And so we now check our sign changes again. Uh, positive to negative, that's one sign change. Negative to positive, that's two sign changes. Now, what's it mean? I hope you were listening to the whole video. I gave you a lot of explanation about why this stuff works, how it works. I don't just want you to be able to do it. I want you to understand it. I want you to understand the interplay between irreducible quadratics, the degree, and why we subtract two. I want you to get that. So two sign changes means we will have either two or subtract two from that number until you get down to one or zero. So two minus two is zero. Two or zero negative x-intercepts. Now, if you remember back to the previous video, we evaluated negative three. Negative three was an x-intercept. Remember that? Negative three. If you don't, maybe go back and look at your notes, look at the, the last video. Negative three worked. We, we factored out x plus three, Remember, at negative three would give us x plus three as a factor, or synthetic division, uh, we use that negative three, and we got another, another polynomial. It was a power five. It was a degree five polynomial that we got out of that. We know for sure that odd poly polynomials have to cross, don't they? They have to somewhere at least once. So let's wrap this whole thing up, this last thing that I'm gonna talk about. That's a degree six. It potentially has six x-intercepts. That's the most it could have. Does it have six of them? Well, no. This has zero positive. Uh, this has two or zero negative. So the most it could have is two. Now, what did we learn in the last video? We learned that negative three is an x-intercept here. So wait a second. We found an x-intercept that was negative, so it's not zero, therefore it has to have two, exactly two. Did you get that? If we found one, negative three, then it can't be that one. It's got to be this one. There will have to be another x-intercept um, on this besides the negative 3. And we, we kind of sort of knew that because we ended with a degree 5 polynomial. If you factor out x plus 3 from here, maybe try this on your own, synthetic division or something, uh, then you're going to get an x to the 5th, 3x uh, to the 5th, something, 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 something. Uh, well, that is still odd. That means it would have another x-intercept. And so that bears this out. No positives. We found one negative x-intercept, negative three. We know there's another. The degree five says that, but after we find it, we're gonna be done. Why? Because there's no positives and there was at most two 
negatives. Maybe listen to that, that last ex explanation of this a couple times and tell the interplay between degree, most number of x intercepts, zero positives and zero or two negatives, and what we found makes sense. We found negative three, that's a negative x intercept. That means you can't have zero, you have to have two. We also, if you divide it out, we get x to the fifth power. What that means is that we would have at least one more x-intercept, because that's an odd, it has to cross. And then that would say, yeah, that's your other one. But after that, you're done. There's no zeros and there are no more negatives than the two that you would find. That's how Descartes' De sign is going to work for us. Um, you, we're going to use this a lot as we go, go forward into the next video. Um, every, every example that I do, I'm going to reference this. So it, you're going to start seeing it as we, as we uh, work it out, as we actually do the long division or synthetic division. So I hope it makes sense. Uh, maybe watch the last explanation a couple times until you really get that to click. If it hasn't already, if it has, awesome. And I will see you for the next video.